Hello students, I am PKS sir and uh, today I am uh, uploading the last part uh, belong to the chapter Bhakti Supi Traditions Subject History. Okay, so let's start the chapter. The name of the heading is New Devotional Path Dialogue and Descents in northern India. Now, as you all know, that many poet saints emerge during 13th-14th centuries and uh, and engage also the, in explicit and implicit dialogues. Okay, and uh, these new social uh, situations, their ideals and institutions, and they inspire the millions of the people. Their way to live the life leading the simple life attracted the common people. So we'll talk about one of the most influential person, Kabir. He belonged to the 14th to uh, 15th centuries and uh, he was one of those men or those great men uh, that uh, who was acceptable for Muslims, for Hindus, for Sikhs. Understood? Now, Actually, uh, <clears throat> historian have tried to reconstruct his life and times through a study of compositions which attributed to him, you know, uh, that as well as later hagiographics. So here are, we have three kind of sources. Point number one, that uh, that Kabir Panth. Kabir Panth, this book is, you know, you know, uh, that uh, composed by, you know, uh, Kabir Panth is the, you can say the organizations of followers of the Kabir who retain the Kabir Bijak, okay, or compose in the Baranasi and the Uttar Pradesh. Second is Kabir Granthavali. Actually, it is associated with the Dadu Pant. Dadu also another influential person belonged to Rajasthan. And point number three, some compositions we have found in the Adi Granth Sahib, the one of the main religious textbook of the Sikh religion. So this all manuscript, you know, that uh, compilations were made actually after the death of the Kabir. So these are the sources and as you all know that Kabir's poem or you can say the Doha survived in several languages and it is still now it's very famous, very popular. Now Kabir drew on to describe the ultimate reality. According to him, point number one, the ultimate reality is God or Allah, Khuda, Hajrat and Pir. Understood? Point number two, he used the terms uh, drawn from the Vedantic you know, traditions, Alak, Niranjan, Brahmana, Atma, etc. Right? Point number three, he also used the terms Sabda, Sunya, okay, uh, from the yogic traditions. Sometimes he criticized the idol worships and Hindu polytheism. Okay. And because he believed in the mono, monotheism. So that's why uh, he uh, he also used the term Supi concept, Zikr and Isk to express the Hindu practices of the Nam Simran. That means he believed in the singularity. He believed that God Allah will be uh, is uh, one of the only the reality of the world. Now the question is that really these compositions were uh, written by someone is all about the Kabir. Definitely there is a debate. We cannot say the proper informations that uh, these compositions made by uh, those followers of the Kabirs, right? Now Kabir's idea probably crystallized through dialogues and debates. 
uh, with uh, the traditions of Sufis and Yogi traditions in the region of the Awadh. Okay, and his legacy also was claimed by several groups. Now, in the latter debates, another uh, you can say that uh, debates arise whether he was Muslim or the Hindu. Some believe that he was born in a very poor uh, Hindu family but later on uh, that uh, Muslim parents fostered him and this Muslim uh, family was known as the Julahas or the Weavers. So in this are different uh, controversial issues and different debatable uh, informations we have regarding the Kabir. His original name was the Kabir Das, but definitely that uh, he was one of the most influential person in that time. And he uh, was known as the Guru or Satguru, but uh, he was the believer of the singularity. Even historians have pointed out that it is very difficult to establish that uh, you know Ramananda and Kabir were contemporaries because someone believed that Ramananda was the guru of Kabir. But there is also debate. Ramananda was born very earlier than Kabir. So that's why you cannot say or cannot ignore that Ramananda was a guru of Kabir or not. Now understood the information of the Kabir. Now we will talk about the Baba Guru Nanak. He also one of the most influential, uh, influential person in the India. He was born in a Hindu merchant family and uh, in the village that is named, known as Nankina Sahib. Right now it is in the Pakistan, very near to the Wagha border. Now he trained to be an accountant and studied Persian language. He was married as a very young age, but uh, he spent most of his time among Sufi's Guru and Faktas. And he also traveled most of the part of the India. The messages of the Baba Guru Nanak actually uh, remember in his Hume's and teachings. And it suggests that he was the believer of the Nirguna Bhakti. That means abstract form of the God like Kabir. Right? He firmly, you know, uh, believed that external practices of the religions was not needed. He rejected sacrifices, ritual baths, image worships, austerities, and the scriptures of the both Hindus and the Muslims. Even Baba Guru Nanak believed that there is only one reality that is absolute or rough. He has no gender or uh, form. Okay, he possess also even a simple way, you know, to connect the to the divinity. If you remember it or you reciting the divine name like our Kirtan, then definitely you can be with your God. Right? Baba Guru Nanak organized his followers because he needed that. He, he believed, uh, actually he realized that. And it, these followers uh, turned into a community and he set up some rules for his congregational uh, worship. Even uh, he appointed his uh, disciples, Angat, Guru Angat. Okay, in that way, this kind of process, uh, this kind of rituals followed by other gurus. Now, Baba Guru Nanak didn't, did not wish to establish a new religion. But after his death, his followers actually uh, consolidated their own practices and so, Baba Guru Nanak did not wish to establish the new religion as you all know that. But uh, the third Guru, Guru Arjun, compiled all the hymns and uh, teachings of the Baba Guru Nanaks and uh, like, you know, included, uh, included the other four successors and other religious quotes like Baba Farid, Rabidas, Kabir, all compiled in Adi Granth Sahib. And it was one of the uh, main religious textbook uh, that uh, for the Sikh religion and uh, these humes are called Guru Bani. 
and are composed in various languages, right? In the late 17th century, like, you know, 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, uh, included some uh, other compositions and uh, of the 9th Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur, okay? And this composition, new composition was known as that Guru uh, Granth Sahib. Now, Guru Granth Sahib, as you all know that uh, Guru uh, Gobind Singh Ji, you know, uh, laid the foundation of the Khalsa Panth, as you, you know, and uh, in this way, Sikh religion originated by him. Followed. Now, the Mirabai. Mirabai, 15th to 16th century, is one of the best known women poet within Bhakti traditions. And uh, actually, uh, she was the believer of the Saguna Bhakti because she was uh, the believer of the Lord Krishna and uh, idol worship she preferred. Okay. And uh, her bhajanas were, you know, were transmitted orally for centuries. And right now, uh, the Vajana's uh, songs you can find out on YouTube or uh, other social media channels, right? And uh, our historians uh, reconstructed her history uh, that uh, from the biographies and the uh, Vajana's attributed to her and uh, according to the traditions, she, you know, belonged to Rajput princess from Murta in Marwar and then she married uh, to uh, that Sisodia clan, uh, the prince of the Sisodia clan of the Mewan, though it was against her wishes. But you know that uh, that uh, her husband realized that she was a true believer of the Lord Krishna and true devotee of the Lord Krishna. So that's why you know uh, her uh, husband uh, did not do anything. And according to some traditions, her you know precipitator was you know Raidas, a uh, leather worker. Okay. And uh, it in uh, that uh, you know you know you know different sexes of the society you know attracted uh, to her and because her vajanas and uh, devotees even Akbar also was very much impressed. So she has been recognized as a source of inspiration for the centuries actually, and her songs continue to be sung by women and men both. And I know it is very very popular as you all know that. Understood? Now we'll conclude this through conclusion reconstructing histories of the religious traditions. You know, the devotional worship of the God with ultimate object, right, of attaining, you know, moks is called the bhakti, as you all know that. If you are devotee to particular uh, God, it is called also bhakti. Okay, so this bhakti word is derived from the vaj, that means adore. That means you are, you are completely abiding by uh, the rules and regulations of someone. The impact of the bhakti movement in Indian society, you uh, no one can deny. That's why now that uh, the uh, lower sections of the society, you know, you know, you know, organize different kind of uh, you know movements, and uh, they believe that God is not for the Brahmins, uh, God is for the every everyone. Now historians also collected different kind of information sources and uh, right now we have uh, the rich cultural traditions, we have, uh, you know, different kind of sources available, you know, to know the religi religious traditions and which were, you know, transmitted from uh, centuries to centuries, like, you know, these kind of influential peoples are web there also, even, even, even uh, some, some important books were written also, okay, and uh, like, you know, different new religion originated in that time, okay, so virtually all these kind of religious traditions continue to flourish to death, until now it is continuing flourishing, right, and, uh, you know, uh, it has a uh, kind of advantages for the history because they are uh, getting easily uh, the sources, and you, it, it, it give permission them to compare contemporary practices and uh, what was uh, the practices in that time. So in that way that uh, the cultural uh, heritage or uh, rich sources of the religious traditions help us, help us you know, to, to, to understand the social history, the economical history in that time and what was the mentality of the people, general peoples and uh, the kings or the rulers, right? So we have learned many things regarding these chapters and what is bhakti and what is supi traditions, how uh, they impact uh, on the um, common peoples and uh, what was the influences and what was the rituals and rules and regulations set up by them and uh, the consequences of them. Okay, so you have learned many things. So I have uh, completed this chapter. If you have any questions or queries, definitely you can ask me. and if
understand what I am trying to say. Definitely you can call me. You know my WhatsApp number. Okay. So I hope you understood. Uh, so for now, I am ending this video lessons. And uh, thank you very much. Stay safe.